Hello, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to work through a business card, and I want to create the business card in Microsoft Word. So let me bring up the finished result, and see a couple of graphics, and the background color that we've used on that, and this is a pretty quick and simple way to do some basic ones. Of course, you always have the benefit of the templates that are offered in Microsoft Word. If you want to see those, just go to File and go down to New, and one of your choices besides just blank document is to go down to Business Cards. And if you pick that option, you can open this folder and see the selections they have available, which you can see them populate as we go. And you can you know pick the, the basic horizontal kind of card. And you just replace uh, and put your information in once you download that particular card. If I wanted that one, I would just hit download over to the right and it would um, put those in there and I would just have to click in and change the company name and the addresses. Any logos would go there, so uh, names and titles down there. So it's pretty easy. It's all done as far as you know, you're going to get at least eight cards per page. Of course you have to pick your heavier card stock that you can buy at any office supply store. But it's kind of nice when you don't need a thousand or fifteen hundred business cards. Maybe you just need, you know, fifty or a hundred. So um, let me exit out of this one and go back to the one that I've already created. And this is the one we're going to attempt today for my CIS 295 class. This is one of their projects. So let me go start with a brand new Word document. So I'll just go File and New. And I'll choose a blank document this time, basically just creating it from scratch and not using the template this time. The first thing we want to do, if you're in our labs, you'll have to um, go to page layout and make sure that spacing after is set to zero point. And also make sure your line spacing, which is under the home tab, is set to 1.0. Okay, single space. The next thing we want to do is just pick a center alignment. Not that that really matters, but I just kind of like to see them centered on there. Now page layout. Let me go set some initial margins for the page itself. So I'm going to go down to custom margins, under margins, and then I'm going to put these settings in. My top margin. I'm going to go with a 0.2 top margin and a 0.2 bottom margin. And then left and right, it's fine at one inch. We'll have plenty of room for two business cards wide. Make sure it's on portrait for the orientation and then say OK. At this point, we'll add a table to start off our business cards. Now, you're going to need a two columns by four rows. So we can go to insert table to make that happen. So two columns, four rows. There we go. And then once you select highlight that with your mouse, you can just click when you're when you've got that particular selection highlighted and that makes it stick. And then we've got to obviously do some formatting to this table. We're going to highlight the table icon that you see up here. Just click on that, like a plus sign, but I think it's uh, four arrows. Just click on that. That highlights the table. Now your table tools should appear at this point, which we have up here, table tools, design and layout. And we want to go to layout tab, and we want to put in some initial sizes for business cards. Now most business cards are two inches for the height. If you want to measure one that you already have, you can see that. Most likely, I mean, can they be bigger? Sure. I uh, just don't want to get them too big just because of um, it's nice when they stand out amongst other business cards, but you don't want them so large that they won't fit in someone's wallet. And the width we want at 3.5. That's pretty standard. And We want to also select a few internal margins within this cell, which is now what we're going to call each um, potential card as a cell. So within the cell, we want to right click and select Table Properties. And you can go over to Options toward the bottom. Click on Options. And now this is some just some internal margins we're setting for the card. And we just want to make sure that left and right we're not too close to the edge of the card itself, because obviously we've got to use scissors and cut it or you know cutting material. 
or a cutting instrument to, to get a nice sharp edge when we do cut. And so we just want to put a tiny little, maybe 0.125 for left and right, 0.125, okay. Uh, top and bottom, you're pretty, you can pretty much handle that just with using your enter key. Now, everything else can say the same and say okay. And we'll say okay there. So that takes care of that. And we also um, want to work with placing some, all the logos and text, you know, on each card. And actually, we only have to get it right on the first card. And once we like what we see on this first card, then we'll simply copy and paste. And I'll show you a trick for copy and pasting uh, to the other seven cards, because you should get eight cards per page. We may want to put in a logo, so I'm going to click up here and uh, not maybe be so centered right now, but let me just go back to align text left, get my cursor there, maybe I want to go down a little bit, um, at which point I just push the whole thing down, but it doesn't matter, but I can click into here, and I can put my uh, graphic in, my logo, my company logo, I'm just making all this up so I can go insert picture and I will go to some graphics I have put aside for this project. Um, maybe I want uh, the uphill bike here or the reverse one, reverse wheel. Either graphic's pretty good. I've used them both, so I'll do this one. And maybe it's a little high. I'll position it, reposition it in just a minute. But once it's activated in there, I need to make sure that I can get text beside it. Well, I can't because I have not selected wrap text yet So on my graphics. Let me click on the graphic. Let me go up here to wrap text and say square. Now that will let me grab it and move it exactly where I want it to be on this first one. So I'll put it right in there. Now I can also add a little effects to it. You have picture styles above you since you've got the graphic clicked on. And let's reveal all these different possibilities. You can kind of see them happen on my screen as I go through. Now I kind of like that one. Uh, there are more, but I'm just going to go with that one for today. A little reflective item going on down below. If I want a little border around it, I can snap a picture border in there. So I'll click on my graphic again, go back to picture border this time, and I can just put a nice little black border around it and then increase the, size, the thickness of the border by going down to weight. And let's say I want to make it just a little bit, like maybe well, one and a half point or two and a quarter point. Um, just a little bit of a border maybe. All right, so that border stands out a little bit more without overwhelming the image. Now, there is some design to think about along the way here. You, don't, you do not want things out of scale. Um, for some reason, my cursor is deciding to travel with me here. There we go. Now, um, let me push that back up. Sometimes it likes to follow, but you can just make push the graphic back up into place and continue on. Now, my students have to do intense bike and trail. That's kind of our theme company for the semester. And so I may just type it in normal font and then change it to what they must change it to, intense bike and trail. And I want them... And I've told them to make sure that any time the company name is used, that they will change it to Viner Hand. So we'll pick Viner Hand. It must be bold, and then the size just depends on the situation. So that looks pretty close. I could probably go a little bigger if I wanted to with that, so I'll just up my font size on that. And you may have a little motto or something that goes with the company. So. Let me, uh, before I leave this line, because I've got a bigger font there, let me reduce my cursor size, get it down to 10 or 11, and because uh, I don't have a lot of room to work here with. Now, um, I can hit enter, and I can have my little slogan in there. Uh, we are using uh, work hard. Let me change it back to something easier to read. Maybe um, instead of Viner Hand, I'll use like a freestyle or something like that. Um, freestyle script, yeah. We'll try freestyle, and we'll say um, work hard, play harder, and I may want to just take the bold off of that. Maybe not so much. It looks like it didn't change to freestyle, but let me go down and see if I can't find that one in my list of selections here. Yeah, freestyle, here we go. And we might get a little bigger. 
All right, now, and then going down some more, uh, I would actually put, probably have my name and my position within the company in the middle here, and there's several different ways to format these out. But then over here on this bottom corner, I'm going to have um, my self number, office number, email address, all that. So I may go down here and just go ahead and put that in to see where we land, see how much room we have left over for the name and title. So we have cell. Um, let me put this back in a re very readable font, and I will stress that. Make sure it's a very readable font that you use for your numbers. So cell. Put some phony cell address in there. And if you need to keep that type, do a shift enter to uh, keep that close together. Office number. And then email. We'll do something like there you go. And then at this point, we want to put in up here our name and position within the company. So I may have uh, name first, and then position. You know, I've seen it done several different ways. So if you want to put your name first, and I'll just go ahead and put mine in here. Um, probably not in a freestyle script. Probably just something very readable. Times New Roman, or I've already used Calibre, so I might use that again. Um, now, I probably want to, I can leave it there to line it up with that, what's above it, or I can scoot it over to the middle. I think I did actually scoot it over to the middle for my, you can just space bar that over and just eyeball what middle looks like to you. And obviously I want it a little darker, maybe a little bigger. And maybe I'll also, um, I'll just space bar over there because tab won't get you what you want doing that. So um, my title today, I'm going to use retail manager and just position that. Let me back that up a little bit so it oops, a little bit more because it's longer than my name actually is. I'm just kind of centering that. Pretty close there, okay. And you can play around with, you know, what size font you want there, what do you want bold, what do you not want bold, lots going on. And uh, I'm also going to uh, change this, um, maybe I have too many line spaces in there too, I don't want any line spaces. Now, your cell within your table will grow if you keep adding things, but you may notice that you can tell uh, and you start deleting line spaces within there if, if anything grew bigger than what's before. I think I can go that way without changing it too much. Now, um, over on this side, I've got another graphic I want to pop in here. And I wouldn't necessarily have to put anything here, but I just thought I would add it. So I'm going to insert picture again. And I had this um, more like clip art going on, so I'm going to insert that. Yes, it comes in huge, but just realize you just need to resize it. And probably even resize it a bit more, We're working with small things here in small places. But wrap text is important again too. So square is works or tight and just pull it over to the corner and it, everything else will go back into place. Now if you want to use that similar reflective uh, picture style, you can do that. Uh, not that one, I think it's that one. I like that one because it also curves the edges of the graphic. So which matches kind of the curved edge we got going on up here. Um, if I really wanted to match in some of those colors that are going on up there, I could put a border around this that would tie in better with the colors used in that particular image. Um, let me just see what I can do with picture border and try out different ones. Kind of the sunset colors. I'm going to go to um, more outline colors and see what might work. Let's see what that looks like. And I may have to just make it a little thicker to be able to see it better. Let's 
So that just gives you a little style options. Now I'm not quite done because there is a background going on here. Now you don't have a lot of options with background. Uh, you could uh, make a, just a color block, like insert shape, make it a certain fill color and put it in the background manually instead of making it a background uh, and then make sure all the other text boxes and images land you know on top of it and but you can also um, just right click if you just want a nice shade just right click within the cell and go to uh, borders and shading and go to the shading tab now fill color you know you can um, pick uh, I was just picking a gray um, you can't and too bad you can't like preview it first but uh, you can um, simply pick what shade you want I mean obviously you're printing on a color printer you can do anything you want however um, I probably just I'm just going with kind of a, a soft gray you have a choice applied to table or just apply to the cell I'm gonna stick with table just have it apply to all the table pieces and that kind of lifts it up a little bit gives it a little more body to it now I also want to show you the really quick and easy way um, to copy this over once you get it like you want it and it's you know not exceeding its original um, size and spaces spacing here I want you to um, highlight just start at the top of that cell go all the way down until everything's highlighted let's see, let me just make sure I got everything let me start at the top there we go and Sometimes it looks like your graphics don't highlight, but I think it did. Now, I'll just do a control C for copy. I'm going to jump over here to the next cell. And let me do that. And just hit control V for paste. No, I didn't like the way that came over. So, let me undo. Let me try that again with con uh with actually it was on center. So, let me try to see if that makes a difference. Control V again. And it's still kind of messing up that. I think it looks better actually. So let me go back, undo, and seem it seem not to copy as well as I want. Let me try that copy again. Let me highlight. Control C. And if we have to just amend it a little bit, that's fine. It looks like we will. Oh, it's not bringing that image over. That's the problem. Okay, undo. So it's not selecting my image. And that's interesting because I've done it before with that same image. <clears throat> okay, that might have done it. Let's try Control C. Come over here, Control V. Ah, there's a trick. Okay, it all came over this time. All both images are there as well as everything else, and it all looks like it's in the right spot. Okay, now I have another trick for you. Okay, we just did a simple copy and paste there. Now. Um, we want to replicate that all the way through. Now, before I do anything, any other keystroke or click or anything, I can do this next trick, which I think is really cool, that you can just click in the next cell and hit F4. That's F4, your special function key at the top of your keyboard. And that will instantly put it there. So just keep doing that. Click in the next cell, hit F4. There it is. Click again, F4. There it is, all the way down. And frankly, F4 works for any time you want it to repeat the command you just did. So it's not just uh, paste. All right, now you may want to look them over to make sure that everything copy, because I have, you know, on occasion seen it uh, misalign something along the way. So there you go. Now, um, it is recommended that if you're printing out multiple copies of these, um, that you first print one like this that has the lines in it but uh, when it comes time to it makes it makes, it makes a template for where to cut at but if you don't want the borders um, you can go back into right click on any of them go to borders and shading again but this time stay on borders instead of saying you don't want to say none but what you do want to do is just leave it on the box border that it is but change the color to be the same gray so go ahead and print out the template like this with the line so you'll have something to follow when you're cutting but this on the next page before you print the second page go in and change the color to the same color as your background so I used that shade of gray I believe right there 
and just for your border. So when I say OK, it takes, it looks like it takes the border away, even though it's still there. Um, but then that way you don't get those lines that you're trying to cut by um, showing up on the uh, cards that you want to cut and use. Okay, so that's just another trick to help you have more professional looking cards. So one is with a, the, the same color as the background and then undo it and there's your borders in black again. Okay, thank you for your time and I hope this has been a beneficial video for you.